silent. Motive. What made you decide to become a screenwriter? Oh, I like the excuse that a kid makes when he hits himself on the head with a hammer. It feels so good when you stop. <laughs> Miss Bardell, is it true you sharpened a knife in front of a producer during a story meeting? Sort of. I was cleaning a gun. Yeah. Was it loaded? No, but he was, as I recall. I would like to add that I won a Writer's Guild Award for that screenplay. Yeah. Why do you write... I'm so sorry, I can't hear you. Sorry. Why do you write so many mysteries? Mm, I like the... No, I love the genre, especially the finished product. I mean, they're a lot more fun to watch than they are to write. Yeah. It must be tough being a woman in the good old boy world of Hollywood. Just write. Talent will out. If you're really good, they need you. Not to imply that it gets any easier. On the subject of mysteries, in particular the film we just saw, Silent Motive, do you feel any guilt over the recent suicide of Craig Johansson? <clears throat> do you think that a cold-blooded killer who blithely admits to his crime and then revels in his lack of motive should go to prison? Yeah? I, I didn't hear you. Yes. Then why should I feel any guilt? Because Craig Johansson couldn't hack it in the joint and strung himself up. Have I answered your question? Do you think they'll ever find out the reason why Johansson killed that teacher? The reason is he was a sociopath. The excuse, I don't think we're ever going to find out. Hmm. To Doug. <laughs> Never back down, Laura Bardell. Thanks a lot. Sure. That's it. That went very nice. Great. I'd like to know where you got the idea to write the power principle. How, huh, Laura? Did it just fall out of the sky and land in that stuff between your ears you call a brain? Is that what happened, Laura? The idea of where to write the power principle. The metro section. Same place you got the idea when someone read the paper to you, right, Harry? Relax. I just want an autograph. I'd rather kick your ass. Hell hath no fury like a writer scorned, hmm, Harry? You know him? Yeah, I know him. Again, 
throwing pride to the wind. Look, I know I'm a pain on this, but I think we should talk. So call me, okay? Please. Give me a break, Brad. The inciting incident. Ms. Bardell, you're probably listening to me right now if what Hillary says is true. It'd be a mistake not to pick it up. If you don't, I have a feeling your life will quickly become more complicated. Who is this? Ms. Bardell, my name is Cliff Sloan. Is that name familiar to you? Do I know you? You know my writing. Meaning? Meaning you plagiarize portions of my screenplay, putting them into The Lost Night. Yeah, well, here's what I have to say about that. Now, listen, I never plagiarized a thing in my life. And if you think you can play hardball oh, with me... I see I caught you at a wonderful time. Oh, yeah. Hi, Brad. Hi. It's just another hack out there who said I read his mind while he penned his life story. I'm gonna love that. Now, listen, I got your message. Do you think we could talk about it later? Well, yeah, I hope so. I mean, you know, you, you and I haven't worked together for... Sorry, a... I gotta go. Okay, all right. We'll call me when you can, all right? Or I'll call you. We'll see. Bye. Voting for the Oscars ends in two weeks. I know Hillary Davenport at Channel 8. Need I say more? Yes, actually. Look, if you don't want to meet with me, I promise she will. What I want is a full-page spread in the trade papers acknowledging that I made contributions to the lost night. So Hillary gave you my number. Did I say that? Then who did? Well, like any good dialogue, the less said, the better. Then how's this? Kiss my ass. How's your friend Brad? That's none of your business. Has he told you whether or not Betty Ford actually shows up? You know, I hate to disappoint you, but Brad's cleaned up his act. Really? Well, there's hope for him yet. You seem to know a lot about me. Everything I need. Good. Then, you know, I practically went broke five years ago defending myself against a similar yeah, suit. It cost you way more money than it would have to simply settle out of court. Right. But I won. So I hope you're in this for the long haul. I am in this for one thing only, justice, obtained through a willing public admission on your part. And if I'm unwilling, you're going to take me to court. And in the meantime, talk to your friend Hillary Davenport, the entertainment editor. Yes, editor. my friend in a high place. <sighs> Has it ever occurred to you that maybe we wrote similar stories at about the... Too many time? similarities. Beside, my script was submitted to the same studio that developed yours. They rejected mine. I say you saw it. I say you're full of... Crap. Laura. I'm staying at the Sunset Motel for a few days for when you change your mind. I just needed to talk to you. Oh, there's two of us.
Doing a little redecorating. Yeah, I can see that. <clears throat> um, Brad, do you know this guy, Cliff Sloan? No. Why? Well, he said that you gave him my number. He's lying. You sure? Oh, come on. You know I wouldn't do something like that. Well, no, I, I know how you are about privacy, but I just thought maybe you let it slip during some mind-altered state or something. Hey, that's old news. Oh, good. I'm glad. Go back to bed. I'm sorry I barged in. Don't, don't go. Don't go. I mean, what else did this guy say about me? What's he know about me? Nothing. Your private life is still private. He just said that I used portions of his script for The Lost Night, and he wants me to take an ad out in the trade papers admitting as much. You told him to shove it. Correct. Now we'll see what happens. Well, what's the rush? I mean, You okay? I can't afford it anyway, to be honest. No one can afford it. Oh, my God, I'm back in rehab. I'm sorry, I just worry about you. <sighs> Don't. I'm on the comeback trail. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Oh, I wanted to ask you something. You know that thing that happens early on in a story that more or less gets the ball rolling? Uh, the inciting incident. Oh, yeah, the inciting incident. Yeah, you never incident. could remember that. I thought I was losing my mind at the seminar. I was talking about how you were directing the power principle, and I couldn't remember. But you said you didn't talk about me. I, I didn't. I was talking about... You just said you did. No, Brad. I was talking about the movie. I wasn't talking about you. I I'm sorry. Let's just forget about it. You know... I'm, I'm sorry I came over here so no, late. No, 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 it's okay, it's okay. Tell me what about your project. Can you give me a rain check on that? I, I'm fighting against this deadline. Okay, I'll keep in touch. Nice. Cliff Sloan, please. Who? Sloan. Cliff Sloan. Who's calling, please? A friend. This is Sergeant Harnadek, LAPD. May I ask who's calling? Davenport, the directory assistance lady. Laura Bardell, Ms. Obscure and Obnoxious. Are you applying for a job here? Something of a secretarial nature, I assume. Has anyone ever told you that you are truly an unmitigated asshole? Unmitigated? Wow. I bet those news writers over at Channel 8 have the best thesaurus money can buy. No. They have the best entertainment editor that money can buy. Me. We agree she can be bought. What's your problem? The fact that I hate you personally? Or the fact that I trashed one of your movies? Oh, I don't know, Hillary. 
Maybe it's the way you kiss up to all those producers you interview on TV, hoping they'll buy one of your screenplays. You know, I caught one of your less gratuitously violent films recently, and I remember saying to myself, how can such a total jerk write something with such warmth and sensitivity? And then it dawned on me, of course, she's a hell of a writer. Not much of a human being, but a hell of a writer. Laura? get around that one. Uh, oh, uh, listen, uh, the Bank of Bardell's just walked in. Uh, well, we'll discuss this later, okay? Hello, my dear. So how are you, Sam? Great. You got my message? Yeah. So what's Hillary doing here? <laughs> oh, come on, come on. You, you're not going to read anything into that, no, are you? No. no, our contract's up at ICA, and she's feeling up every agency in town. You know, one of the ladies here just met her for lunch. Of course. But you would never represent her, right? No, 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 no. I don't need a public flogging for my favorite client. <laughs> Are you okay? You know me. You look tense. When have I not been? What am I going to do with you? Mm -hmm. Now. Not to rush. Oh, just, uh, just curiosity. How's the writing coming? It's coming. coming. Oh, don't sweat it. They wait. They love you. <laughs> you want some coffee? Sam, what is it? What's what? Why am I here? <laughs> it's Brad. What about him? For the last two weeks, he's repeatedly called the office. He's dropped by a couple of times. Uh, he just happened to be in the area. He even wrote me a five-page letter swearing he was clean as a whistle. Oh, speaking of mail, yours is piling up again. Randy, bring in Laura's mail, please. Be right there. Thanks, honey. I don't know, Sam. Or do you think having Brad direct my next script is such a bad idea? No, it's not such a bad idea. It's a terrible idea. Yeah, but he says he's clean now. But you expect him to say he's dirty? No, I'm just suggesting oh, that maybe... Honey, I know what you're suggesting. You've got to stop feeling responsible for him. Do him a favor. Let him be responsible for himself. I, I hope to God he is off this stuff. You know, but he's going to have to prove it before I take him on again. Believe me, I'd like nothing better. But this way, he's killing himself. It'll hurt everybody around him in the process. Yeah, I guess you're right. It's just... I'm not saying you can't be his friend. My God, you are his friend. You checked him into all those clinics. You picked up all the tabs. But you can't do everything. And you can't let him make it your responsibility to jumpstart his career. Here you go, Laura. Thanks. Thanks, Randy. I'm not asking you to like what I say. I'm asking you to listen. If you really care about him, you won't make it easy for him. It won't work. OK. Good. And there's good news as well. I had a talk with Hurry Up and Wait Walker. He wet his pants on Murder at the Marathon and has his heart, assuming he has one, <laughs> set on Ted Bronman playing the lead. Oh, come on. You got to be kidding me. What? Ted Bronman is like the Marlboro man after a lobotomy. I mean, tell him if that's what he thinks. He's got his head straight up his Laura, Laura. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I, know. I burned too many bridges. Burn them? You vandalize them, torch the remains, <laughs> and piss on the ashes, you, for Christ's sake. You know, between you and me, I don't care if I ever work with Walker again after he screwed Brad over on the last job. Now, you see? Will you stop mothering Brad? I'm not mothering him. I just don't want to work with an insensitive jerk. This is not even a sure thing, so so just 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 let me deal with Walker, okay? Please. Okay. Oh, God. Anything interesting? They spelled my name right, but they uh, sort of misspelled bitch, though. You know, ever since I did that interview for Newsweek, I make one quip about jealous wannabe writers, and they want to kill me. Oh, why don't you let me burn those? Uh, do you get a perverse kick out of reading that stuff? I don't know. Feedback. <laughs> Mm. 
What is it? It's another psychopath. I've seen one, you've seen them all. Oh, can you put these in your freak file? Anything else for me? No, that's all of it. Mutilated animal, perhaps? That's all of it. <laughs> See you, Sam. And if Brad calls, remember Nancy, just say no. See, Wednesdays haven't changed. No. Oh, some things never change. Some people, too. Is that a clumsy reprimand of sorts? You're no dummy, Laura. But then you never were. Can I buy you lunch? He asked the highly paid screenwriter. <laughs> Come on. I never bothered you before. Doesn't bother me, Laura. You're losing your sense of humor. Should have been a cop. Nobody has a sense of humor like a cop. Next to body armor, it's our best protection. I like the glasses. Thanks. So, lay it on me. Uh, looking for some grisly anecdotes for a script? Well, actually, I was hoping that you would comp me a peek at a murder scene. What do you say? I say, why should I do you any favors? Mm, let me think about that for a minute. Apple pie. Warm, not hot. And two forks. Thanks. Anytime. I knew you'd be here today. You never change. Whatever it is you want, Laura, you'll have to get it from someone else. It's just a few blocks down the street at a motel. You mean the Sloan case? Yeah. You know about that one? It's mine. Hey, then I've come to the right guy. Not if I don't let you in. Don't make me see it's for old time's sake. It's just business. I'll even keep the receipt. <laughs> so? What do you know about this one? Caught it on the news. No, I mean, uh, what makes it special? You know me. I'm always curious how you go about investigating a murder when you don't have a clue to the motive. Slowly. How'd you know we're nowhere on this one? They said as much on the news. So what's changed? Nothing. Body's gone. That's it. No, I mean you. What's changed? Why do you want to know? Writers are curious people. You never could stop working. Sorry. I'm interested. What's changed? It's a hard thing, this job. See people at their worst. So you change. No, you. Since you ask. I've lost friends. A wife. My first impulse toward my fellow human being is not a kind one. And I don't fully trust anyone anymore. My wife was in the ready-to-walk stage when you and I worked together. Maybe that's why I... Uh... Answer your question? Sloan was killed in here. One shot, back of the neck. Exiting the throat. Remind you of anything? What do you mean? End of the match, wasn't it? When the killer shot people through the throat. <laughs> Maybe the guy who did this is a fan, huh? Welcome back. Voted for the Academy Awards end soon. And although there's no such thing as a sure shot, many plan on winning their Oscar pool by
by picking The Lost Knight to win for Best Picture. Word has it, Camille Drake is a shoe-in for Best Actress. And maybe that's not entirely surprising. After all, Oscar winner Laura Bardell wrote the script with the actress in mind. Joining us now is Camille Drake. Camille, you look good. And the winner is... Laura Bardell for Silent Motive. Thank you. Uh, they told us not to thank our agents if we won because it doesn't play well in Peoria, but to hell with it. To my agent, who's been with me since day one, Sam Van Drake. Thank you. Hollywood is the war, and you're my shield. Goddamn Queen Madonna. Oh, um, and thanks to the Academy, too. <laughs> It's a thin line between love and hate. It's a thin line. Do you know who this is, you bitch? Between love and hate. You can either talk to me or you can talk to the police. Take your pick. So who are you? I know about the real Cliff Sloan. I know the cop investigating his murder. I want some straight answers. It's not what you No want. more games. When I saw that on TV, I wanted to call the police. Only I... I never would have gotten involved with him if I knew he was going to hurt involved anyone. Involved with who? Wilkins? Yeah. Oh, see, he is such a nutcase. You believed his garbage. Yeah, he was very convincing. Bullshit. Okay, I needed the money. Everything has a price. Is that it? Yeah, for most everyone, doesn't it? Does it? Look, the night that we met, I wanted to come after you. I wanted to tell no, you the you truth. Did. No, I didn't. You don't know me, you know. 
things lately have not been so good, and I met this guy, and he gave me an opportunity to make some quick money, and I took him up on it. So all of a sudden, I find myself sitting across and I realize I am talking to this woman who is smart and tough and cool and uncompromising, and I am sitting there lying to her. And I didn't like that very much. Tell you the truth, I feel like a real jerk. Well, sir, you're right. Pretty stupid. Stupid. Miss Bardell. This guy, I, I think you should look out for him. He really hates you. What about this guy, Sloan? The one in the motel? I think he hired him off the street. He gave him a place to stay. I think he, he probably even told him that he wanted to help him. Earned his trust, then shot his throat out just to make me a murder suspect? God, I had no idea he was this crazy. Yeah, so crazy. You're having lunch with him afterwards. I was afraid not to. I, I don't get it. No one knows Sloan. No one saw you and me together. Why would anybody suspect me? I wish I could tell you. Well, I guess the police can figure it out. Police, great. No, uh, no, I know it's the right thing to do. I, it, it's just that it's a murder. There, I'm being a jerk again. No, I, all right, I will go to the police. I will tell them everything I know. It's about time I took responsibility for myself. It's just that I'm a little scared. Of the police? No, the police are the least of my worries. Wilkins? Yeah. Well, I can understand that. Miss Bardell? I am truly sorry for all this, and if there is anything I can do to make up for the trouble that I caused you, please tell me. Just don't be so naive next time. People can get hurt. Or worse. Paul, did you find him? Major. Plot. Twist. Who is this? Wilkins? Who is this? You let him go? I don't believe it. Believe it. Wilkins has an alibi. Yes, yeah, so you said, like what? You don't want to know. What? He was working that night as a projectionist at the Puss in Boots Theater. And it checks out. So far. Well, if he didn't pull the trigger, then he knows who did. Get out your rubber hoses. We talked to him. And? Sure likes you. Couldn't stop talking oh, about yeah, you. Oh, well, that's fact. comforting. Not to me. He knows more about you than I ever did. Like what? Beautiful, sexy, impulsive, dishonest, paranoid. He's got the book on Bardell. What are we playing here? This man is a murdering lunatic. I know he's a lunatic. I don't know he's a murderer. Well, I do. Are you going to believe him or are you going to believe me? I'm a cop. I don't believe anybody. What I do know, though, is I've got a woman here who doesn't think twice about using people. Meaning? Meaning you conned me into that motel room. You want to tell me again why you want it in there? You're the detective. I'm sure you'll figure it out.
in the bathtub, Lieutenant. Crazy cops. He was harassing me. And then when I pulled myself together, I called you guys. And that's it? Just like that? Just like that? Hmm. Nothing touches you, does it? <sighs> okay, let's venture into the grayer areas of your story. What were you really doing here? I told you I came to warn him about harassing me. You know, Laura, we're not as dumb as the cops you write about. You're a tough broad, but you're not an idiot. You came here unarmed. Where's the gun? There is no gun. I don't believe you. Well, then, search me. Laura, <laughs> don't. No little games. I'm dealing with two deaths now. One murder and what looks like a suicide, and you're tied to both. Now, I say you brought a gun. And when these people find it, I'm going to make a lot of room for the possibility that it was used on Cliff Sloan. Marty, have them check outside for a weapon. And when we're done, have them check in here all night if they have to. I want them to find it. All right, Paul. So, he may have killed Cliff Sloan, but if he didn't, he knows who did. And it was all done in a way to make it look as though it was you. He hated me. Isn't that obvious? But then, in a rare moment of guilt, he slashes his wrists in the tub. That's what it looks like. What did you say that taped message was on your phone tonight? It's a major plot twist. I'm not a writer, but doesn't that imply a story continues from here? God, I hope not. <laughs> Look, it seems like I've answered all your questions. Are we square? For now. Good. You have a script on cops you'd like to get produced. I don't think so, Laura. I'd like you to come down and answer some questions. I'm under arrest. No, but you will be if you don't come along. Then we can hold you for longer than I think you'd like. Hmm. Sounds vaguely familiar. Don't make this any harder than it has to be. Doesn't seem that hard for you. Trust me, you're making it a hell of a lot easier. Let's go. Well, let me get my keys. Nice suit. Thank you. Were you writing? No. Were you cleaning your gun? Fastest mouth in the West. Mm, you ought to know. God damn it, Laura. Will you knock it off? Can you let your guard down just once? This is not one of your games where you can be brittle and clever and walk away without a scratch. No. No. Your friend didn't slit his wrist. Somebody did it for him. After he was fried in his tub. What are you saying? We found a toaster stashed in the alley behind his apartment. The wires had been frayed with a knife. It had been thrown in the tub. Ring any bells? The power principle. Do you think I killed him, Paul? Get in the car. This bad cop, bad cop routine. We're beating the crap out of this horse and getting nowhere. Look, Ms. Bardell, we've been at this... I want to know how the district attorney is going to look at this case. Ms. Bardell, is it true you, in your own words, nearly went broke defending yourself against a plagiarism suit? One, two. 
Is there a law against defending one's honor? No, but when somebody accuses you of stealing material, you don't pull any punches, do you? No. I don't pull any triggers either. I'm not that crazy. Oh, really? It says here, Oscar winner Malcolm Baldwin, who produced and directed Silent Motive, called you a psychotic. His full quote was, she has a PhD in writing and a PMS in psychotic. They only use the last word. That's why when I accepted my Writers Guild Award, I called him a sexist pig. Now, I'm sure that's in there somewhere, too. You have a reputation for displays of public anger? You were arrested for spray painting a movie billboard on Sunset Boulevard? Well, they fouled up my writing credit. I merely corrected it. You know, if you had a shred of integrity, you would walk away from this case. But I guess conflict of interest doesn't mean anything around here, huh? Cliff Sloan was shot through the throat. Harrison Wilkins was fried in his tub. Both are methods you've used in your scripts. Do you think if I killed someone, I would advertise the fact by using methods that I have used in my films? The Manson family painted Helter Skelter on a wall in the home of one of their victims. Flattery will get you everywhere. It's obvious that you two have a lot against me and nothing on me. So I'm leaving. You can find your way out. Be in touch. My tax dollars at work. Hi. Thanks for coming. Yeah, I know. I'm glad to. I didn't really think you'd ever want to see me again. Things have gotten pretty complicated. Go ahead. Well, uh, what do you want me to do? Do you know about Wilkins? Look, I, I don't know what you mean. I told you everything I know about him. Wilkins was murdered last night. What? Oh, my God. Yeah, now there are two people that are dead, and there seems to be a connection. Well, I, I don't understand. So what does this mean? It means that we both better be very careful. I don't, I, I can't believe I got involved in this. And at your expense, I am sorry. I am really sorry. No, it's OK. But now I really need your help. All right, you mentioned Malcolm Baldwin and Hillary, of course. Did Wilkins say anything else about anybody that... No, he never mentioned anyone else by name. Other than a name, did he ever mention any event or any place that maybe I Wait a minute, wait, somebody? wait. The night I met you, he called me and asked if you had mentioned hearing from this one guy who apparently... This guy? Yeah, he, this guy who... Just excuse me. Hi. <laughs> I was cleaning up around my apartment. I found something. You got to see it. Oh, uh, jeez, I'm sorry. I figured it'd be a good time to catch you. Yeah, usually it is. Um, Brad, this is Mark Calloway. Mark, this is my old friend, Brad Flynn. Yeah, hi. Nice to meet you. Maybe I should get going. No, no, there's no reason for you to leave. I'd like him to see this, too. Come on, sit down, Mike. Mark. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what was this for you? Remember? Brad. You jerk. <laughs> You're gonna love this. It's a blast in the... Come on, sit down, sit down. You sure? It's a bl yeah, sit down. It's a blast in the past of Laura and me. Before your time and all, but, you know, I think I still dig it. Oh, man, a thesis project. This is the one we wrote as a team. A veritable epic, all six and a half minutes of it. And here it is. My first... Our first feature. Laura wrote it, I directed it, they loved it. Check this out, the highlighted part. Flynn's directorial effort is quite simply poetry in motion pictures. Right. Brad, what are you doing? Okay. A guilty as charged. I'm here because I want very badly to be part of the deal on your next script. Now, I know I've alluded to alluded. this. Alluded? Brad, you have spoon-fed me this crap for over a year now. Yeah, but I mean, I can't get through to you, you know? We don't connect anymore. The, 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 the neurons or whatever, they, 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 they're not touching it. They're misfiring or something. I mean, I don't know. I'm on the verge of my rebirth here as a director. I can feel it wanting to burst out of me, but I need the right property. Look, the sucker out, you know, let me nurture it to say you know what it I guarantee you, we take best picture. I'm gonna wait in the other room, okay? Brad, you're loaded. You're robbing the crew. Don't be a jerk, Brad. The only thing you're on the verge of is destroying yourself. Trust me. Trust you? I can't even get a straight answer no. out of you. Then how's this? No way. Do you remember the last film we did together? 
Halfway through that hell trip, you became a complete basket case. I carried you, the cameraman carried, there were so many people that walked you through that fiasco. It's an absolute miracle that you got screen credit. But what, oh, that was utopia compared to your last film, right? Who's been talking about me? Everyone, Brad, stop kidding yourself. The word is they could have shot in Alaska. There was so much white powder flying around that set. You've become a boring and predictable junkie. You've got to make up your mind, Brad. If you want to kill yourself, you're going to have to do it on your own time. You heartless bitch! You'll be sorry for that. Don't threaten me, Brad. What would you say about me? Anything I can do to help? Sure, join the party. to the end of a beautiful friendship. Yeah, that was really rough. Mm. If I didn't care about him, it wouldn't be so rough. But I do. We go back to a time when we were both young and cocky. But things have changed. Well, for what it's worth, I thought you were terrific. <laughs> no, I, that's a very difficult situation, and you did what you had to do. You don't think that I'm a heartless bitch? Anything but. Mm. Here, give me that. just accusing me of robbing the cradle. And suddenly you're worried about your reputation? Mm. So where does he go from here? I don't know. It's hard to figure out. I want to help him, but if I help him, I might be hurting him. At least that's what Sam says. Yeah, relax. Mm -hmm. Who's Sam? Sam is my... Very tough, very smart, very true friend. Sounds like your friend is right. It's just... Brad was so talented and... We were very close. But you can't be responsible for it. Mm, you sound like Sam. <laughs> Sam must be some guy. Oh. Mm. oh, that feels nice. You're nice. Oh, you seem nice. Are you nice? Is nice good? <laughs>
Oh, hi. Hi. Sorry, I couldn't sleep. Really? Mm -hmm. I wasn't having that problem. <laughs> What are you reading? Silent motive. Sometimes I get the feeling that people think that's the only thing I've ever written. Mm. It must have been hard to do, to go through. Mm. The high watermark of my career. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just wanted to get to know you better. Well, you're in the wrong room. Good afternoon. It's your tireless agent calling. Afternoon? Oh, unbelievable. Can you uh, come over here in, uh, say, uh, oh, now? What's the hurry? It'll be obvious once you're here. Something wrong? No, 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 no. Come on, come on. Jump in the car and get your ass over here. It'll be worth it. Mm, what for? Listen. I'm your agent. You're supposed to trust me. See in a few. Why? We wanted you over here. We can even move around this place. When they get here? About five minutes before I called you. Huh. Here, here's the oh. card. Hmm. Well, what does it say? Sorry about your recent troubles, Edmund Prey. Edmund Prey. Why does that sound familiar? Edmund Prey is the teacher who Johansson shot in Silent Motive. Hello? It's Brad. I need you here right now. Listen, Brad, I'm really sorry about last night. Now, please. It's open. Lock it. Lean on it. Sticks. Get in here. Now. Students. Continued use of cocaine, kiss away your comeback. Sent copies to the trade. Brad, this is a lie. I never said any of this. You destroyed me! Brad, Brad, you are wrong. You have just got to believe me. No, there's only one thing I have to do. Look around, Laura. What do you see? What do you mean? The last night, remember? What the hell, Brad? Brad, look, you have got to listen to me! No. Brad, stop you listen it! To this. Stop it! You ruined me! Stop it! Brad! Brad, stop it! Brad. Oh no! Somebody throw an ambulance! Someone's up there! Oh my God. Oh my God.
Please, God. Someone's trying to frame me. They're doing a pretty good job of it. Can we meet? I need your help. Come on in, Laura. We'll talk. Just put the badge away, and then I talk. You know I can't do that, Laura. Come on in. Do you think that I'm crazy? Laura, Laura stop and listen to me for a second. There's some things you have to clear up. You can't be your own... Bastard! Ms. Bardell? This is the police! Some juice? Sure. Yeah. You made the papers. Yeah, 
remind me of him back then. You're saying he was pushed, or, or that he might have been. Yeah, well, in a way, he was. What's up? I've just been trying to figure out why I'm a target. What do you mean? Well, when I write, I'm putting myself on paper. I'm saying, here's where I stand. Here's my line in the dirt. And then I defend myself with the words that I choose. So I guess I am what I write. All this time, I've been concentrating on me, on myself. When maybe it's actually something I've written. sake what the hell's going on i'm being framed who and why i don't know but i'm gonna find out have you seen the papers you're all over the place yeah sam listen i'm okay i uh i just need to ask you something am i responsible for craig johansson hanging himself what does that have to do am i Is that a dramatic pause? Or does the fact that you made money over this bother you so much? Look, don't go squeezing yourself through a moral ringer. Sam, you are the only person that I can trust on this whole planet. Now, am I responsible? Yes or no. His actions put him in prison. And you helped keep him there. Maybe if not for you, he'd be free by now. You mean he'd be alive? You want honest answers in your hour of crisis? Yes. Maybe it's best if you turn yourself in. Nobody can frame you if you're in jail. The only question is, how long would it take for us to... to clear my name? I keep thinking that maybe it's not what I've written after all, but what comes afterwards? What do you mean? Well, all the ripples in the pond that I've been ignoring for 13 years. The ramifications. What do you want to do? Research.
So, Sam, are the offers still rolling in? Look, why don't you just turn yourself in? You're innocent. It'll all come out. Just tell them who you think it is, and then let them take over. What if I'm wrong? Then the truth will come out. But how long is that going to take? You've got to remember, I'm the one that pushed Brad over the edge. That makes the others so much easier to buy. At least that's what they say in the paper. You think he's in here? Here he is, Chester Driggs. Bardell Craig, Joe Hansen's blood is on your hands, Chester Driggs. Well, it sounds like a threat. I gotta go see him. Okay, but I'm going with you. You've done enough already. I'll be okay, I promise. Besides, they're probably watching you. Here. You know where the car is parked. What about you? I'll take a cab. Get out of here, will you? I'll see you later. What? Thanks. Chester Driggs, please. He's gone out. Can you tell me where? He likes his privacy. Yeah, well, that's one of the privileges he gave up when he committed a felony, isn't it? This is his new parole officer. Yeah, right. His new parole officer's a woman. Yes. And if you don't tell me where he is right this second, I can promise you where he'll be a week from now. Crap, Chester. I know that you're the person behind all this. You were his only friend in prison. I'm the reason he spent more time there. You're the reason he's dead. What, are you just trying to even up the score for an old buddy? Picture of a perfect kid. Straight A's, terrific athlete. Then one day, he's a killer. Just when you think you got it. Picture changes. Craig would have enjoyed this. He loved a good surprise. Chester. Bring more money next time, Al. Chester. Right now. Over there. In there, you said the picture changes. My picture of Joe Hansen was that he was a sociopath, that he killed the teacher for no reason. Was I wrong? If I was wrong, he had a reason, a motive. Chester, people are dying. I may be responsible. Now, if you know something, a motive, you have got to tell me. The only thing Craig really cared about was his kid brother. Brian. He gave him this for a birthday gift. Craig never took it off. I mean, never. What would be the one thing someone could do to your kid brother would make you walk up to the son of a bitch and shoot him six times? and not regret it.
promised I'd never tell. He swore he would never tell either. To Brian. Silent mode. Oh, God. I missed it completely. Craig cared more about his kid brother's honor than, than his own life. Not to mention his freedom. He knew he wasn't getting out. Why am I telling you this? You're the one who kept them there. Yeah, but I didn't put him there. No. You made him a star. You made it impossible for him to ever tell that. Lady, you missed the forest and the trees. Hillary Davenport, please. She just left. She went home. LAPD, Hollywood Division. Detective Faltrella.
surprise. <laughs> Twist ending. What are you going to do, Laura? I'll take that. Thank you. Is she? She's okay. So far. I just didn't need her putting up a fuss. Actually, you know, you kind of interrupted me, but that's okay, because, you know, the more, the merrier. Do you like the makeup? Huh? Little tip of the hat to the lost night. I came here to put an end to this. Well, it's a little bit late for heroics, don't you think? I know what happened. I know why he killed the teacher. I understand now how you feel. You do not begin to understand how I feel. Mark, don't. Brian! Oh, Brian, yes. You have every reason to hate me. But if there's any part of Mark in you, then... Mark was a lie. Everything Mark did was a lie. Every time Mark touched you, I wanted to hurt you. Every time Mark caused you pleasure, I wanted to cause you pain. Mark was a lie. But you know all about lies, don't you? I mean, your lies killed my brother. I didn't lie. I just didn't know. You didn't know? But you knew. Why didn't you talk? You could have helped him. Are you saying I'm responsible for this? Give it up. I have called the police. They're on their way here. It is all over. A lot can be done in a short amount of time. Brian, don't. I am sorry that your brother's dead. I am sorry for the part I played in it. I misjudge him and his actions, and he paid the price for it. What he did was wrong, but he did it to protect you. At least there was a shred of nobility. There has been none in any of this. So I lack the moral high ground. So tell me, Ms. Laura Bartell, what's it like up there? Up there where you can pass judgment on people and you can ruin their lives and walk away untouched and more rich and famous without giving a damn about the wreckage that it's you leave not behind? That I didn't give a damn. I just didn't know. And does that make what you did right? No. Very good. You're learning. It's just a little bit too late. I'm sorry. What scenario can I concoct to make her life more miserable than it's already been made? Huh? Well, I, could, I could kill her. No. She wouldn't learn a lesson now, would she? Well, I could wound her. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> oh, my God, what was I thinking? Now I don't have your undivided attention. You're distracted by the pain, making it harder for you to comprehend how unhappy I am over the fact that you kept handing Craig the rope until he finally took you up on it. Well, I hope it paid well, Laura. I really do. But you get more than money for your writing, don't you? You get reactions, too. Well, let's just say this one wasn't well received. Please. Brian, no, please. How about this, Laura? How does this feel? No, huh? Well, then how about this? God, no. No, Brian. Oh, God, no, please, don't. See, no. You're learning. Please, don't. No. <laughs> How you doing? I'm um, okay. Is there somebody you'd like me to call? Sam.
tell him I'm, uh, I'm okay. Anybody else? There's no one else.